Okay, continuing on with our theme of uh, bringing the queen out too early. Here's a short miniature from Oop Sala, 1963, from a player named Pedersen and Larson. Not Bent Larson, but different Larson. <clears throat> this game started out E4, C5, D4. C takes D4, C3. So we have some kind of Danish gambit or Goring gambit. E5. C takes D4. E takes D4. And Queen D4. Knight C6. That's gaining time on the Queen. Knight F6. And Black is already uh, slightly better. And it has a leading development just based on the Queen being pushed around bishop c4 knight e5 black could have made even a stronger move by just completing his development on the king's side playing bishop uh, b4 and just getting ready to castle and overrun white's position but knight e5 attacks the bishop c4 Bishop b3 and b6 is played, which is a, a really weak move here. But these players are relatively unknown. And again, I just wanted to show you this concept. The strong move here is just simply bishop c4, excuse me, c5. If queen takes c5, knight f3, forking the king and queen. And that's the main idea. B6 was played, however. H3. And now Bishop C5. So you can see the player didn't see that tactically he could just play Bishop C5 right away. And he wasted a move by playing B6 thinking he had to prepare it. So H3 was played. It's a real nonsense move. Bishop C5. Queen G3. And we see the uh, knight being attacked on E five as well as this pawn and there's nothing wrong with attacking things but early in the game going around attacking things with your queen is usually not pretty good and of course there's a nice tactical refutation based on the idea of a fork bishop takes f2 and no matter uh, what capture white makes uh, he's going to lose uh, heavy material so for instance if king takes f2 then just simply knight takes e4 and if queen takes f2 then knight d3 so the two knights work together to uh, conquer white's position here is another example we have e4, c5, b4, the infamous wing gambit on the Sicilian, which never got too popular. It's kind of designed, I guess, to be like an Evans gambit for the Sicilian, but uh, doesn't work that well. So c takes b4, d4, so there's the full center. E5, one of the moves that can be played against it. D5 is also possible. There's many moves that can be played. Even uh, Queen A5, Knight C6, Knight F6. All of, the, all of those moves can be played. So E5, D takes E5, Knight C6, Knight F3, Knight to G, Knight, excuse me, Knight to G, Knight G E7, Bishop F4, Knight G6, Bishop G3, Queen to a5 and the queen d5 so white figures that he'll hit the black queen and also get this perhaps straighten out his pawn structure after queen takes uh, d5 however white has a surprise excuse me black has a surprise for him he also recognizes there's this threat of b3 and after b3 check he'll just simply capture the queen and this is what happens so b3 discovered check 
queen takes a5. So he figures he gets rid of the problem. But black has an ace up his sleeves and plays b2. White says, hey, I have that covered. And he moves the queen again. Queen c3. Queen is going to be the hero. And after pawn takes rook on a1, queen takes a rook. Excuse me, queen takes pawn on a1. And it'll just be up a queen. However, if the bishop b4, uh, black is just better. As he will win the queen back. And he will capture the rook on a1. Because now the queen is pinned. Instead of this move, queen takes a5. White could have done a little better with knight bd2. Blocking that discover check. And then if queen c3 attacking the rook, then rook c1. And of course, uh, black is still better. After a move like bishop a3, for instance. And he has nothing to worry about. Okay. In this game, white launches a premature attack involving his queen and neglects his development. And watch what happens to him. This is between a player named Dutch with the white pieces and John Sugden with the black pieces. From London, 1964. So E4, C5. D4, C takes D4, C3, D5. E takes D5, Queen takes D5. And this is all perfectly playable. The um, reason why is notice the queen cannot be easily attacked here because of white placing his pawn on c3. So therefore the usual move gaining time, knight c3, is not possible. Knight f3, bishop g4, and here's where white gets a little bizarro. So queen a4 check. And this is basically like a meaningless check because it does nothing to affect black's development in a negative way. Black makes just a normal move. So knight c6. Knight takes d4. Bishop d7. Black wants to keep his pawns from being ruined. And knight b5. And notice that instead of just um, improving his development. And getting the other minor pieces into the game. And getting castled. That um, he's attacking black's position with only two pieces. And this is bound to backfire. Castle happens. And he's figuring, hey, I can win a pawn after knight takes a7. Now, better is just to keep try to catch up in development, play a move like bishop e3, where then black can uh, play a6. And then you still have some kind of game, even though black is, is a little better here. However, white was greedy and played knight takes a7. And after knight takes a7, Queen takes a7, and then with the queen far off exploring in foreign lands, queen d1 was played, and the game is over. Can you see the mate? So I'll let you figure that one out yourselves. But after king takes d1, then you can try to figure out the continuation. But white is completely lost. And it's a mate in three. Forced. In this game we see more of a subtle attack on white's queen. So this game is from 1988. So in a former Soviet Union. <clears throat> between a player named um, Kramer Giant. And versus I am Boris Shipkov. So this game started off as a Sicilian, e4, c5, knight f3, knight c6, d4, c takes d4, c3. So we see uh, black or uh, white going for some type of moral gambit here. d4, 
D takes C3, Knight takes C3, E6, good move, often anticipating the bishop coming to C4 and then thus blocking the diagonal, bishop C4, queen C7, now white has to worry about future attacks against this unprotected bishop, castles, knight F6, so, so far so good, uh, white is just developing. He is down a pawn and he has to develop and get his attack going quickly. Queen e2, again developing, keeping an eye on this pawn, but also protecting the bishop and connecting the rooks. After, say, the bishop moves somewhere, the rook can go to a1 and d1. Now, notice the position of the white queen. So now, knight g4 is played. And we can see the idea is very primitive, which is just to simply mate on h2. The problem is right now is this knight is here. Knight is guarding the h2 square. However, black, um, I mean white has to be very mindful. For instance, some kind of attempt to get rid of this uh, piece here. So... White falls asleep and plays bishop b3, which looks very normal. And then after knight d4, is completely lost. His attack on the queen will move to this square. And the knight. So both attacks cannot be parried. For instance, if as soon as the knight goes to capture on d4, then there's mate. And so black had to, uh, black won the game. Instead of bishop b3 there, which is obviously an error. Knight b5 could be played. And then, for instance, um, queen b8. And say h3. And notice the knight being on b5 guards against the knight coming to d4. Then after h3, black could get real serious and play a move like h5. So black has a good position there. Another move that could be played here is g3. And play could go a6. Bishop f4, e5. Knight g5. Attacking here. And knight h6. If e takes f4, then black is in a bit of trouble. So those are two solutions to that problem right there. Knight b5 and g3 are both uh, good moves that basically keep the game on equal footing. However, after bishop b3, which is a completely normal looking move that you see in many Sicilians. Knight d4 is all she wrote. Alright, this game is from... Your favorite place, Reykjavik. And the year was 1982. This game, e4, d6, d4, knight f6, Pierce defense, knight c3, g6, knight f3, bishop g7, bishop e2. This is known as the classical uh, approach. White doesn't try to build up a big old center, for instance, with the pawn on f4, like a la the Austrian attack. But simply develops with two pawns in the center and just castles and plays very solid. This was a favorite uh, way of playing for Anatoly Karpov. Who can always be recommended as an example to follow in these type of openings. So, castle bishop g4 was played. Bishop e3, knight c6, and white is so solid here, it's, uh, the onus is on black to prove that white center is weak. h3, taking the bishop here, bishop takes f3, and then finally e5 occurs, but then d5 happens, 
in 97 and this is not an opening survey but if we take a quick assessment of the position we see that black has kind of um like a bad you know kind of a bad king's indian structure and that uh his knight is still on f6 and uh white's pawn is on d5 <clears throat> white has gotten black to get rid of his light square bishop which many times will be lurking on c8 ready to sacrifice at some time on h3 so he's kind of got like gotten kind of manipulated into a weaker version the king's indian whereas um white's position is easy to play but let's see what uh see what uh t took place here now white decides here which interestingly enough to me is to play on the uh the uh king side here which is possible i think he can play on the queen side also if he if he wants to but for instance playing a4 etc but he plays bishop e2 Knight d7 and black's idea is clear is to try to get this f5 and then g4 is played and now here i believe white black should definitely play f4 because i don't i don't feel that white should really be playing on the king side in this position he should be um trying to play on the queen side but anyway, that's for a topic for another day. We're just talking about these early queen movements. So after knight d7, g4, king h8, king g2, knight g8. And just a, you know, just a beginning or culmination rather of a bad plan. And then h4. And, um... Here we go. The pawn grabbing. Queen takes h4. Why not come and steal the pawn real quick? Well, this this has bad idea written all over it. First of all, even if white had no way to recover the pawn, it looks like it would be just a good sacrifice. Just after rook h1, because you have this open file with the king right on it. So, for instance... If just simply rook h1, right, and the queen went back to, uh, let's say, d8, then the build up with rook h3, and uh, let's see what else, and uh, rook e8, and queen h1 is already looking uh, quite intimidating and ominous in the position. And that's if white could not, that's if white could not get the pawn back, if he just lost the pawn. This is still better for white. So just based on that alone, you should not take this pawn. However, white had an even stronger move. And he simply played, played g5. And as they say, the threat is stronger than the execution. What's the threat now? The threat is simply rook to h1, trapping the queen. Where's the queen going? Nowhere. This game has a more subtle uh, example of exploiting early queen movement. It's not as obvious as the last one where the queen snatched a pawn and then was uh, unceremoniously trapped in a dungeon. Here, the players are a little bit stronger and therefore it's more subtle. But still involves the early queen movement. Check it out. This game is from uh, Germany. Bundesliga. 1982. Between a player named Wolfgang Thormann. And a grandmaster you may know of today. Klaus Bischoff. With the black pieces. So D4. G6. One of my favorites. Modern defense. Flexibility. C4. Bishop G7. Knight c3, d6, e4, and many times uh, white players will try to um, transpose into some type of king's Indian defense 
or so, of course something they are familiar with but they must be very careful because it's easy to transpose into good versions for black if if they don't know the theory so knight c6 just immediately there's several moves that can be played here but just immediately challenging the d pawn it's all kind of moves that can be played here knight d7 can be played even knight a6 with the idea of c5 um even e5 right now can be played which is a a pet line that i enjoy but knight c6 d5 knight d4 right into into the center bishop e3 c5 now this is good for black why because if uh, white takes on percent and the knight just comes back and we have some damage done to white center this bishop is made stronger and now we have a type of Marazzi bind position which is just fine uh, for black we have transposed to the Marazzi bind so knight g2 and we see that black is just is white is simply just trying to win uh, d4 queen b6 supporting the knight here and with a threat there queen d2 so we have a normal looking and respectable move here so there's a standstill in the fight for d4 white can't win d4 and uh black is just maintaining his stance there knight f6 and h3 is played and perhaps uh, Wolfgang was worried about knight g4 so he plays h3 castle and rook b1 so far so good queen f5 is played and now you might be thinking well now we can win the pawn so knight takes c takes bishop takes then we have some tactics along this diagonal namely knight takes e4 right this is forced because the queen is attacked so knight takes e4 now queen takes d2 check and knight takes d2 now notice the bishop on d4 is no longer protected so that's the idea there so wolfgang played the move rook d1 and this move allowed a tactical blow to occur now this is based on several features one is the queen being right here and part of this pin right the opposition of pieces and the other um, part of the combination is that the king has no squares to go to problem let me just save this the problem is is if um knight takes e4 now the pin gets exploited and you have a beautiful the epaulette mate right the queen cannot capture because of the pin and that's so that's one major that's a part that's a major part of that combination while why, why um, black is forced to resign excuse me why why white was forced to resign there's no possibility of capturing here and if he of course if he tried to do bishop takes d2 first then he would just simply okay this is the last <clears throat> last game in this uh, part of the video I might do a part uh, three but um, I think after these games, you probably get the point.
But I know some of you are saying out there, oh, that only happens between lower rated players or whatever. You know, it's not realistic that that's going to happen to me or one of my opponents in the game. So let me show you a game between two grandmasters. One is Alexei Shirov with the white pieces. Um, in his prime, this game is from Novograd, Soviet Union, 1994. And the other player was in his prime at the time, very young, Evgeny Bareyev. Both top <clears throat> top grandmasters. So this game went E4, E6, and at the time Bareyev was probably the number one player and still is a great expert of it. But at the time, again, he was young in his prime, probably the number one uh, player of the French defense in the world. So if you want to learn the French defense, Bareyev along with uh, Victor Korsnoy are uh, their two, two guys. Here's Shirov, right? Mr. Fire on board with the white pieces. So he plays D3. This is a well-known way of avoiding uh, theoretical discussion, really, in the French. He could go into a King's Indian attack. And this is what Shirov does. He avoids mainline French. He plays Knight D2 just to avoid the trade of Queens after uh, D takes E4. E takes uh, D takes E4, so the knight is there on D2, so the queens will not be traded. Knight F6, Knight GF3, D6. This is um, designed just to get rid of the so-called problem bishop that's locked behind these pawns, and so black plans on coming to A6. This C3. Many times in the King's Indian attack. G3 will be played. This side there, Bishop G2, Castle, Rookie 1, and so on and so forth. So C3 is played. C5. So we see Black going for his, his typical structure in the French. And note that E5 is available right now. E5 and D4. However, Shirov plays G3. So, we can see him going for this King's Indian attack setup. Bishop A6. Kind of trying to throw a little monkey wrench in White's plans. Because since he played the move C3, the D3 pawn was weakened. And now, on Bishop G2, then the D3 pawn was kidnapped. Therefore, Shirov plays C4 first. So resolving that problem and deadening the scope of this black bishop. So D takes E4, D takes E4. And the bishop simply goes to bishop B7 with good prospects. Also, white's D4 square is weakened. So we can say that out of the opening, black is just fine. Just equal. And perhaps this is what Shirov was looking for. Equal, but maybe perhaps in slightly unfamiliar position, in less theoretical position where there's some scope for originality. Queen c7. So, again, if just to show you, if knight takes e4, castle, that's knight d6, knight e5, and king takes g2. And um, Black is just fine here. I mean, he's just uh, basically kidnapped the pawn. White has a little lead in development. But um, I think it's definitely worth taking that pawn. However, Barev decided to keep developing. Play Queen C7. E5. Knight G4. Castles. Again, there's another moment where perhaps if he plays this, however, then there's some trouble on the horizon here. Little tactics because this is only protected one time, and this is only protected one time. So that means if one of these pieces is attacked, then the other is unprotected, and that's what happens in this variation. So if the knight takes e5, 
just to show you if queen takes e5 it's terrible because her bishop takes b7 therefore after knight takes e5 the only other move is to play to play is bishop to b2 g2 excuse me king takes g2 and if queen takes e5 then queen e3 and this rook is unprotected in the corner with no way out and that's a consequence of being behind in development so that's why that pawn wasn't taken in that situation so knight c6 applying more pressure to e5 to knight e4 and then black played rook d8 now it is possible to take the pawn here but however if the knight takes e5 knight takes e5 not queen takes e5 because if queen takes g4 just winning a piece knight takes e5 bishop f4 this could get a little prob problematic uh, for black here so for instance after uh, say rook d8 bishop takes queen takes and then queen a5 check and then after a move like rook d7 going into the pin then white create some difficulties for black here and with a player like Shirov you do not want to have a lot of tactical uh, deficiencies in your position so Boreev is playing real conservative and um, logical so rook d8 queen a4 <clears throat> just placing a pin right here on this knight getting out of the queen d7 just a fine move and I mean black's position is nothing to be ashamed of it's a fine position he has equalized his two top grandmasters Shirov plays bishop g5 and what could be wrong with this move So now Berev decides to take Knight C takes E5. The idea behind this move is that if Bishop takes, if Bishop takes D8, then Black wins after Knight takes F3. Check. Bishop takes. And then queen takes a4 because the queen would be hanging. Do you see that? So that's the main I that's the main idea of that. The queen is unprotected here. So so he feels, hey, I can take that because this bishop cannot capture here. That's the again that's the main idea. Bishop takes knight f3 check. Bishop takes. It's forced because it's with tech, and then queen takes a4, just winning. Now, as good as that move looked, the correct move here is knight d4. With the same with the same idea. And the difference in uh, between this and the text is the difference between Black's resignation. And not resigning and being slightly better. So after knight c takes e5, the d file is still open and the queen is pinned. And Shirov simply played a devastating move here. Rook a d1. And instantly, Boreev is in a lost position. He cannot, cannot capture the queen. Because rook takes d8 as mate. He 
Okay, now move the queen out of the way because the queen is pinned. So he's just basically losing material. There's nothing, nothing that he can do, and he was forced to resign. And the reason why this move is better is because there's no way that white can exploit the open D file against the queen. In this case, Sherov would simply have to either trade queens, where black would be just fine, or go back to D1, where again, black is just fine. After bishop takes E4, knight takes D4, with this attack here, bishop takes... Okay, so that was the end of that game. And the end of that little series. I hope you enjoyed those brief uh, series of miniatures. And I hope you learned about the dangers of uh, that associated and responsibilities that come with uh, moving the queen around early in the opening. So you see amateurs and grandmasters alike often uh, will get their queens trapped or just put in uh, precarious situations um, right in the opening. Just because uh, they moved them to a, a square that uh, made them vulnerable to attack. Or some type of other tactical blow as you see here in the Shira Barev game. Both players over 2700 at the time with this move. Rook D1 which is just a fantastic uh, move. You know. Uh, so I hope you learn from that. Please like and subscribe as usual. And as we go on, we'll be looking at more themes. You know, maybe uh, I'll make some videos about when it is good to uh, move the queen out. But I think that will be a little bit redundant. Because I think in order to know when it is good to move the queen around, it is basically good to know the opposite. And when it's not good, then you'll, you know, just by... Uh, you know, using that logic, you'll know when you can move the queen around, which is basically when uh, the coast is clear. <laughs> when there's no no tactics or the queen cannot be attacked and gaining time and space and material, etc., then it's all right to move the uh, queen or grab a pawn or something like that. But when the queen can be harassed and attacked um, or it leads to some type of open file against the king, or you're behind the development, usually those are red flags there. So, in this case, what happened was that um, Black just uh, missed the tactical nuance with the bishop on g5 and the rook on d1 leading to mate. This king is uh, still in the middle of the board, and uh, he failed to keep the position closed with the move knight d4, which would have made this move impossible. So anyway, we will see you soon.